Sorcery and Religion in Ancient Scandinavia by Varg Vikerns. In this video, I will be showing you the summary of what I've came up with, the conclusion of Ancient Scandinavia and the Sorcery and Religion book that Varg Vikernes has created. Most of what I say in this video is really not exactly what's in the book, but my interpretation of the book and how it is meant to be seen by the person reading it themselves. My thoughts, my ideas will be included in this video as well. Now in the beginning, Stone Age Man didn't really know anything. Lightning struck a tree and that created a fire. The sound of the crackling thunder, where could that come from? And how can it be useful in the way that we make our tools today as humans? Thunder rocks the earth as trees ignite with the light. How similar of an idea this was compared to natural lightning and thunder making noise after hitting trees. I'm wondering if because of this they felt that there was an equal right to sacrifice of a person and that would bring good fortune to them. For example, if you get struck by lightning and it hurts, so you strike someone with a force and it hurts them too, thus bringing the good fortune through an equal sacrifice. Now, Varg mentioned that according to the people that he was around, Varg was not to kill frogs because if he would, it would rain. And according to those people, it meant the same if you killed black snails. So, I wonder if having a life of basic thoughts like this, although to us now seem odd and complex, unless we dig deep into the basics of the Stone Age man who understood that sometimes, if you do it right the way the weather did, which is similar to me, my breath is the wind, my sadness is the rain, fires on trees and man clocking rocks to possibly mimic the sound of thunder, would have had a small spark or lightning come out and strike. So when man did that to a tree and noticed fire, it made sense. Maybe that same feeling of sacrifice, of something, of an equal or greater value, like a living creature for example, if you feel pain, and the frog does and it lived in water, then that would mean that animal would be suffice enough to sacrifice for the anima of rain. Now an anima is an energy or a force of spiritual power. For example, the force of breath or for wind. Now as we look into the death of people in the anima gods, it's a coincidence. It coincides neatly. Likewise, the earth has the wind. So I must have it as well. This makes sense to people and in turn, it actually did work. Although pain and suffering can continue to be immense in the idea that all must be sacrificed until something pays off to the deities. Humans may have seen, they may have been seen as a second nature or being of underneath the animas that rule that ruled the earth back thousands and hundreds of years ago. So to fill the empty void and to, and to not realize this science was not necessarily always true did take some thousands of years to understand. Some people today may still believe that killing people is a component for, de for deity sciences because it was so rooted in them in which the way it had worked. I feel like this was all rooted into almost all people. If for an example another religion came in that had an anima or a god, 
that some people would attack those other types of religions. To say that this isn't our religion, anima, and other ones clearly, they must be stopped as they go against all of what the anima stands for as an unseen entity. War of bloodshed would start when religions, they clashed. So war made sense. Nowadays, stopping war is important, although as they go against all of what the anima stands for as an unseen entity. May seem right at first. What is right today may be wrong tomorrow. And we must remember that. So remember, nothing really goes against standards unless it's sheer diabolical intent to kill for the need of emotional conflicts. Anything that stems from extremism or nothingness. Many common arguments have this, although some people are great at giving the ideas that one thought is not just one, but it is of many in which the people do think or feel. So hate, murder, and crime will always be around. People more apt to doing this will be considered extreme because hurting one person does not end the cycle of pain or suffering for that other person. But instead, it furthers and extends that line of death or destruction. Ignorance is not bliss. The entire idea seems to be of a form of photosynthesis. Something that I found greatly odd and how bizarre, oh how bizarre, some of the ideas that were in the book. For example, the belief that men had nothing to do with childbirth had led ancestors to have women do an event for a deity to see that if the deity or anima would gift them a child through a wedding ceremony that would crown the lady as a queen. The event that they held was a beauty pageant with skills of weaving, gathering and more. For a woman would be crowned for an entire year only after winning these competitions. So I would only have to assume that they establish seasons from weather patterns at this point. But yet the book contradicts this by saying they kill animals in the winter to push forward the winter into the warmer seasons. Which could be the beginning of time and not everything's perfect and that's okay. This book was pretty much down to a key note. So imagine wiping out animals only to find out that the seasons move more naturally. They just move as is. We haven't been long, around long enough to understand that. Or maybe we have. Although believing in something makes well for a good promise of feeling welcome into a world of which is all but nothing and everything at the same time. Also, men did the same thing with competitions, ultimately ruling out the weakest of the bunch in terms of quality every year. The kings and queens who won the entire competition would then marry. This could be a good way to rule out having the best genetics for childbirth, since now I'm sure that they understood how children were born at this point. If they established their seasons and years properly, now by then. In my own words of what happened when the patriarchy of kings and queens came to understanding of what sexual intercourse was, and it was the reason for women getting pregnant, is when everything changed. Monarchy was taken. It was taking a hold in a different new form. In a different form, if a king had a child with a lady of whom would either have been a winner of the pageant contest or either someone 
just finding out that there's an actual possibility to be linked with sexual intercourse and having a child born later on the year that would spread from one word a mouth and people understand this that a monarch king who would have won the contest would mainly would start they would start keeping it in the family male children who were born sworn into kingship after the previous king would have passed mainly due to this being the start of an action of a man more than a woman. The action must have stemmed from the anima and deity thoughts, which then there is a reaction. There must also be a reaction as well too. So you are the breath, and that comes out, and I have the breath too. So that just means that something happens and it makes sense. And they found out with the rocks that it made sense. Then everything does. So, inaction had nothing to do with it. Women would seek out taking it from men. Because they thought it was right. Due to a man's senseless yet selfish act of sexual pleasure, addiction, and selflessness. And selfishness. Most likely that carried down through the line of incestuous relations that may have formed to keep the monarchy family pure disgusting but made sense although at the same time if that happened so yet they kept the family pure uh this it was disgusting with the incestuous relationships although at the same time uh if <laughs> this is where it gets wild Although at the same time, if that happened, children would be born deformed, further devaluating the idea that women aren't part of the act of giving childbirth and also encouraging the nullification and forgetfulness in the beginning when you took care of, nourished, and appreciated them for what they were for and what they are, and something will start to grow. Which I guess, in another mind, is part of sorcery as well, too, if you want to dig deep into it. Which is extraordinary. Now, that's my thoughts on the monarchy and why incestuous relationships happened. Why everything just seemed to have changed as well, too. So you can see that it makes sense, but in the end, it's just, it's not good. And if you went the other way and you were that other type of uh, Christian person back in the day, because Christianity did exist at this point, and it was being pushed into ancient Scandinavia and not everyone liked that uh, they felt like it was an attack on their beliefs like I said earlier on in uh, earlier on in the video this is all just one big mess at this point in a bad science experiment it wasn't just the king who did it wrong it would be shared accountability from all of the members in the community spreading words and poking in it as well so many people may have thought the same as well so after the king anointed people to be allowed to procreate, which may have made sense at the time as well, until children started to be deformed with these deformities, and then that's that's just showing that on the no matter what, it's just a huge problem. So uh, when children are born with these deformities is when people may have had the idea to question whether or not it is right to keep into the family as their heritage lines would fall apart and die. Uh, selfish acts of mankind can deteriorate people into nothing. After acknowledging this, Christianity, uh, like I said, it had came in and decimated almost all of the people who would have been in research of how the world works. The anima had turned now into Christianity, moving old ideas into a new book, holidays, symbols, etc. Christianity was also known to... So after Christianity pretty much just took over all the symbols, the holidays, and the books of everything, pretty much converting people automatically over to it because it just made sense not to go out and I guess slaughter as many people. Although Christianity did the same thing for, for many of years. There were people that were... Uh, Christianity was also known to rid of people who were part of the sorcery which is the study of how people worked out 
and uh, sorted out how the world worked. And if they did not become God from what they have learned in sorcery, which means figuring out that, hey, the rock, if you clack it together like the sound of thunder, and then lightning comes out of it, which is the spark, and then hits that piece of wood, which is the tree, which is the thing that burns and is given to that person that is seen as sacred. Yeah, and everything seems to have changed, so. Uh, uh, bloodshed never seemed to stop, even before Christianity and the later days of religion. Sorcerers would be slain because of sorcery, um, and that, that was not necessary. Man is not God. Fun fact, though. Friday the 13th was of a goddess of love and old sorcery being eradicated when people found out children were made from man, not women. So men had to take action. It wasn't made of inaction. The lady doing, sitting there, just doing her little thing, right? Men were more of the action role. So that's where things started to change more men-oriented and and stuff so yeah now once the goddess now who was once a goddess the goddess of love was now just seen as an unlucky person as the idea ideology didn't align with women anymore the same way that it used to and the word berserk came from bearskin bearskin berserk i don't know if you sort of put it together it makes sense in the english dictionary i don't know how uh, it came from killing animals to send offerings to the anima. The fur was worn as pride to the anima and helped keep people warm before winter's end. And that's good because it kept people warm. It made sense that so the anima would want people to live. Continuing, hair was grown for nature's purity in sorcerers who reached God's status or to people who thought that they did. Any answered questions until debunked from the animal gods would be considered that person uh, being a god. Uh, my question is, uh, would that make someone a false god? Which makes sense because no man is god, although life is just an everlasting plane of changes. That is right today may not be, what is right today may not be right tomorrow. So, yeah, things change. There's a festival that they did as well that Varg speaks about called Maypole. Uh, it was an event held by people celebrating sorcery as people who survived through Christianity. Uh, a honeymoon uh, that was originated from the festival as well too. The whole thing was pretty much a big honeymoon. There were symbols as well too that, that had that as well with the ideology, the symbols, and the way that the sorcery worked. So I guess even today Christians and others celebrate the same way. Although Christians would take old holidays and symbols into their own to possibly convert them over. So people would see that as an attack, right? They would see that as like stealing something. So there was this, there was no discrimination. That was the idea of it. Although it seemed to be that people felt as if their own needs had to be met. So that's when the attack started. So they stayed within the lines of the anima and sorcery as much as they could, which does make sense for people not to like die and to have order in the chaos that is consumed of life. Check out the movie called Midsommar as it talks about the, the pagan cults and gives some creativity into this as well to the, uh, the events of the honeymoon. Uh, Midsommar is a quite creative movie and it has, uh, it has like, it has a little bit of uh, psychedelic use. There's a lot of sex. Uh, there's a lot of uh, stuff that you just wouldn't see as right nowadays the way that you think compared to the days back then, but each of them still sort of makes sense. Vargo is speaking about how, uh, about how runes work, which is cool. They are given, they are in many games, and yet we know so little about them as the average person, right? Like you play RuneScape for an example or some other game. Runes help keep things simple, uh, and they also help to recognize dead people, the grave markings essentially, as well as the animas words with the, that person so they are animal words the the graves for Valhall Valhall is an underworld for the dead this is this is something that a lot of people may feel oh like wait I thought I thought being a pagan was all cool right there's a lot of brutality in it 
There's a lot of brutality. You may not accept it in yours, but that's creating a new type of sorcery or religion, if you may. Because now you're adding to that. That's your belief. Right? The belief that everything stems from what you see from the action to another action is extremely important to uh, sorcery itself as a whole. But it does change. Sometimes warriors would fight outside uh, the sanctuaries and die. They would do this because they died for honor that gave them the goods of the underworld. This was a form of appreciation and respect for the dead. The sanctuaries were also a major component for what would be called racism or protection for purity. Which protection for purity makes more sense to the people rather than racism, but other people would see it as racism. And this is why Var gets a lot of criticism, and this may be why the way that he thinks um, with his little problems and his little murder sprees, which uh, obviously there's been a lot of murders and sorcery, so, and it happens, right? The sacrifices on the slabs and such, too, which we know from other folklore that's a little bit di that's different from what i'm talking about that has nothing to do with this book this book is what i'm keeping in general of what varg has uh inside of it so yeah it keep it kept respect for the dead uh the sanctuaries were a major part for uh racism and uh purity only to those who had similar features of the deity or the animas of the sanctuary could actually go inside of them uh Keep in mind, uh, Varg was known for, quote, being, having like a racist lifestyle, for example, inciting hatred through one of his self-made RPGs called My Farg, in which the primary act or activity is to kill off anyone of non-white European descent. He also burned churches and murdered a fellow bandmate and was sent to prison many years ago and served served a period of time. So with the in intense connection Varg has with the ancient animas and deities, keeping in mind the background of sorcery inside the community in which he lived and all the folklore, Valhall and the sanctuary being sacred may have incited the beginning of racism within him. The racism, right? Although he doesn't see it as that, maybe he sees it as purity. Although we'll get into that later on. Uh, being confident in the ideology of sorcery, it can be safe to assume that Varg's acts of violence are incited by some type of these bizarre beliefs that are not correct to us, but to him, yes. Remember, Valhall, the Hall of the Fallen, is a sanctuary for the deities and animus. Uh, referring as well, references as well can be read in his RPG book, My Farg. So you can just go back to that with the killings and such of people that aren't of white European descent and besides the violence noted inside of his book sorcery and religion which may have encouraged the systemic feeling of discourse towards non white Europeans we can see that Varg Varg's life is majorly constructed around a simple lifestyle for example building on land from the ground up like he has uh, social conservatism conservatism and survivalism uh, pretty much working everything from the ground up so he had a basic lifestyle which makes sense with the sorcery that's what you're doing and if you go beyond that then then it's crazy right but everything's basic like we're just overcomplicating it most of the time right so yeah mm -mm 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 -mm. I lost my train of, I lost my little area here. Just one second here. Uh, okay. Oh my goodness, why does it do that? <laughs> I have a lot written down here. So pretty much working everything from the ground up, which stems from many ideas of sorcery and religion being in his book. I strongly believe that we can see how he thinks in his book. My first thoughts on reading the first two pages of the books were that it's simple um, and really to look for issues inside of it as well while I was working with it. Um, and Varg, I found, uh, he feels that every, I, I, Varg feels everything that he has done is right because that uh, of what he focused on and what made sense to him, he grew up with it. And most people have that father-son relationship, but 
you know, people change. Ignorance is bliss. We're trying to change stuff consistently, and it gets a little wild. So uh, it made sense to him. He grew up with it. And many of the finds in this book can make sense, especially to the Stone Age man. Although we are not there anymore, many people uh, do appreciate these styles of work in today's day and age. Although the same pieces may have been altered. Christianity changed this. And what I mean by that is that the idea of the thought that there is one deity uh, and not many some people like Varg revoke that and thus continue to make him feel a part of something. So he continues to feel a part of something by revoking that and that's what he was born with. So it makes sense. His people were like it. He didn't seem wrong with his people. They're like, okay, it's simple. We like them. Why would you do something and grow up and then completely invalidate yourself? That would be immense to the ego and everything that you are as, as a whole, right? Which I could see as like a person that would go out and be like, look, I got to always do something or I can't. I would relate that to that type of person. Always have to do something to fill in the void that no one else is there to help me at all. People are there to help you. And uh, I'm not saying things are traumatizing. Like Varg, I, don't, I feel he wasn't really traumatized growing up. Uh, his lifestyle and his Wikipedia and everything that you look up are quite... Um, uh, quite consistent with everything. This sorcery and religion is quite important to his upcoming and bringing of his life. So, um, we're always working on social structures and people keep changing. Um, we know we can change forever, but that can seem discouraging when we have to do it all the time. Laziness, ignorance, who knows? This book shows why Varg thinks the way that he does down to the core. Although maybe he does stuff differently sometimes, who knows? How can one ask? Would you speak with a murderer like this? Would you talk to them? While reading this book, I also learned that Varg was into a type of neo-Nazism and that at least one of his books do promote hate indirectly and one of them promotes hate directly at people. The Sorcery and Religion book is a piece of history and I have to credit the invaluable connections between the people and how they think differently. This book gave a pretty unbiased view, of course, dedicated to the deities and animas of ancient Scandinavia. Uh, here's a fun fact. If you use the word troll, you are referring to evil spirits attacking others. That's what a troll is and what it does. Varg seems to have found many references within Disney books and, and movies within the history of ancient Scandinavian mythology. So yeah, I mean, that's a fun fact too. It's wild. Continuing, uh, through the process of reading this book, Sorcery and Religion, I kept a keen eye out for racism, why Varg may be the way he is, and uh, to learn some stuff uh, on old style sorcery, all the while looking out for manipulation tactics that Varg may have used. Uh, I have yet to see manipulation tactics, although I feel uh, Varg feels correct, and some people may not agree with him. And that's okay. That's the way he feels, right? He's allowed to feel the way that he does, which is really awesome. And I'm glad that someone feels confident unless it demoralizes others. Acts of arson, murder, and racism are not to be glorified either. Varg does refer to many of the stories in this book as myths, which is correct, although there are contradictions within the definition of it. And here it is as listed, a traditional story, especially one concerning the history of people or explaining some natural or social phenomenon and typically involving supernatural being or events, which is sorcery. And number two is widely held, but a false belief or idea. So at this point, it's see, see it as you want to. See it as you want to. That's what it is. That's what... My conclusion with that part of it is and uh, that's pretty much my conclusion on ending the book and what I was looking for thank you very much for watching like and comment subscribe for more this video did take a long time to make and I would 100% be absolutely appreciated it would 100% be appreciated thank you once again and check out my other videos and have have a great day, everyone. This was one hell of a video. Bye now.